Welcome back. I'm Erica Fernandez, and I'm joined here this morning by John Bright, who is a maritime archaeologist here at NOAA. Thanks so much for being here today, John. Well, thank you for having me, Erica. Of course. So I know that um, you guys have just removed some buoys um, yes. from the Great Lakes and also installed some new ones. So go ahead and tell me a little bit about that. Right. We've removed our, our seasonal mooring buoys, which you know are the big white plastic buoys you see from the beaches, or if you're out on the water, you see them marking many of the shipwrecks out here. Uh -huh. We took the actual buoys themselves out of the water, so the part that floats on the surface, we've removed. But in the process of removing those buoys, we've installed gear on several new shipwreck sites, okay. some around Thunder Bay Island, some in the Black River area, okay. such that when we go out next season, we'll be able to install new mooring buoys and have new shipwrecks that have uh, those buoys on them to help with access, uh, make it easy to find them and, and go snorkel or dive or, you know, all those fun things. Yeah. So how many buoys are there that you remove and how many are now installed? Right. There were 36, or I'm sorry, 32 mooring buoys okay. that were installed on shipwrecks. We okay. added um, six to that. So we have now 38 mooring buoys on 37 shipwreck sites. It's uh, there's one shipwreck, the Grecian, that has two mooring buoys, one on the bow, one on the stern. Okay. Now there are a total of 38 mooring buoys okay. in the sanctuary. So if someone is interested in finding out more information about the buoys, where can they go? They should go to our website. Okay. We have a section of our website that has a uh, PDF that you can view on the web or you can download and print off. It has the names of all the shipwrecks, uh, the counties that they're in, and then it has a GPS coordinate so that you can plug it into your GPS and go right to it. All right, so if someone's interested in knowing how the buoy actually works, how does a boat attach to one? The buoy has a long trail line. It's a big, thick piece of uh, r yellow rope, basically, that comes off the edge of the buoy, and it okay. has braided into it a loop, and you can just reach in the water with a boat hook or your hand, pick up that loop, and put it over a cleat or tie it to your boat, however it is that you want to anchor to it. So you just pull right up, find that long piece of yellow rope, and, and hook right into it. So obviously these buoys are connected to shipwrecks, and that's why they're, they're placed out there, but how are, are they directly connected to the shipwrecks? So are they just kind of placed out there? They're not connected to the shipwreck. Okay. There's a very, very large weight. And depending okay. on which shipwreck you go to, there's a couple of different ways of doing that. Some okay. of them have very large train wheels, okay. just these big, these big uh, steel wheels that are then, then a chain goes to them, the chain shackles in. Okay. Some of the buoys are connected to sand anchors, big screws that we screw into the sand. Some of them are connected to these big boxes that we put out if it's too rocky on the bottom to okay. put a sand anchor in. We put a box and pile rocks in it. Mm -hmm. The chain connects to that. So the, the actual attachment isn't to the shipwreck itself, and that's the main point of the entire mooring buoy system is that there is an attachment point near the shipwreck that a boat can anchor to that's going to deal with the strain of a boat being on it okay. such that the divers or the snorkelers or the fishermen that go out there don't have to anchor their boat directly to the wreck itself. Okay. There's a lot of, you know, delicate, fragile parts of these old wooden shipwrecks right. that if you were to attach a boat to them would potentially damage them. Right, and we definitely don't want that. So what are the benefits of the mooring buoy system? The benefits are that it provides easy access to these wreck sites that are commonly visited. Mm -hmm. They're very visible, so it's easy for people that are out on the water to see them when they're going to that GPS coordinate. You mm -hmm. get close and there's this big uh, big white mooring buoy. They have lights on them at night so that you can see them at night. Uh, and they make just a, a nice, safe way to go to a site, attach to it, navigate down to the bottom, navigate around the shipwreck site, come back to then a place that you can ascend from and go straight back up to your boat. All right, so quickly tell me, uh, when are the buoys normally installed and then removed? We try to get the buoys out as soon as we can after the ice thaws and the weather clears. So usually it's late April, early May, we go okay. and get as many of them out as quickly as possible, okay. focusing on ones in easier to access areas, the shallower waters closer to the coast that people are more likely to go to first. Uh, we leave them in all season and then as far into the uh, fall as we can, so usually late September, early November, we start taking those buoys back out. All right, well, so if anybody's interested in going and visiting these shipwreck sites, they can visit your website like you said. Absolutely, visit the website. All right, perfect. Thanks so much for being here today, John. Thank you, Erica.